Uh, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today in this Apex Office Hours uh, episode. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, universal theme and mobile UI. Uh, but before I do, I just want to take a brief moment to talk about the safe harbor statement. Uh, this is just to tell you that uh, you know, please don't make any purchasing decisions based on what I talk about today. Although I talk about uh, you know, features in the release versions of Apex, I may venture into something that's uh, not yet released. So with that being said, uh, today is all about universal theme. Uh, and just to give you a little uh, primer about myself, uh, my name is Shaki Brahman, and I'm the design lead for Oracle Application Express. Uh, that means that I work on the UI of Apex and the user experience of Apex, not just for the end users, but also for the developers. So what you see in the Application Express Builder, what you see when you sign into uh, Apex, uh, in addition to uh, the applications that you build, especially with Universal Theme. Uh, like most of the Apex development team, I'm also on Twitter. So that's probably the best place to kind of see what I'm up to and uh, you know, kind of get updates from uh, the entire Apex team, actually. So it's a little bit over three years since we first came out with something called the Universal Theme. And the goal behind Universal Theme has always been to make you, the developer, the Apex developer, uh, more empowered to build compelling user, uh, user experiences with your applications. If we look at what an Apex developer is already doing in their day-to-day, -day, right? They are working on data modeling. They're working on their business logic and performance and security and deployment. And on top of all of this, you also have to worry about user experience. And this is where Universal Theme really comes into play. The idea here is that you don't have to be an expert in vast uh, amounts of you know, web technologies in HTML and CSS and JavaScript and all these other things that are necessary to build a compelling user experience. You have to just simply focus on building the application, and we'll take care of the UI for you. Uh, with that being said, Universal Theme has three cornerstones. It's designed to be responsive, meaning that it works on these different screen sizes uh, no matter how big or how small. Uh, I've seen applications uh, you know, running on 65-inch uh, TVs to a small, uh, very small phone, right? So anywhere in between, from a tablet to a, to a larger screen, to a TV, all the way down to a very small phone, these UI components should work just as well. In addition to that, it's also designed to be versatile. And what this means is that you should have all the building blocks you need to build uh, a rich, compelling application, right? So we have things like uh, you know, all sorts of different reporting and charts, but also UI patterns which are coming across the web, such as cards and comments and uh, timeline views and all sorts of different things which are really essential on the web, and they are now available there uh, within your grasp. They're in Universal Theme. Uh, and finally, it's designed to be customizable, meaning that you can easily customize your application to fit within your own brand. Now, again, there's never a one-size-fits-all scenario here, right? Like every, every brand, every company has their own personality. And using the universal theme and features like theme roller and live template options, you can customize the appearance of your application so it fits in better with your own company. So that's, uh, that's what uh, the three key components of universal theme are. And I'd like to go into specifically uh, universal theme and mobile UI. So with that, let's take a trip down a memory lane and talk about jQuery Mobile for just a few moments. And I chose this picture here because we, when we look in the past, we often paint a very rosy picture, right? How were things? We tend to idealize things. So when we look at how jQuery Mobile first came to be, this is at the very young age of the mobile web, right? iPhone had just come out a few years ago. And the jQuery mobile project, sponsored by the jQuery project, the jQuery core uh, library, uh, was that in order to build a web application, you can use this framework and you know, build a compelling mobile user uh, experience. This is back in the day when, if you went to your banking website, you would have a special mobile version of your banking website. And you wouldn't be able to do a lot of things there, right? You could probably. Uh, check the hours, you can probably find the closest bank, but you couldn't really sign in. And if you could sign in, you probably would only be able to check your balance, but you couldn't make a transfer, right? It was a very slammed down web. You couldn't do a whole lot. And 
at the same time, you would notice that there were many, many websites which had a mobile version and a desktop version of their applications. Now, that's no longer the case. So this is 2010. jQuery Mobile had just come out. And around the same time, we came out with Apex 4.2. And this is all about uh, this new release. We had a slightly updated UI for, for the browser, for, for, for Apex. And we talked about how you could build mobile applications using jQuery Mobile. Now, this is the leading framework at the time to build these mobile web applications. Uh, and also along this time, we had something called, uh, you know, we had themes which you could style using the jQuery Mobile theme roller, right? So you'd go to the jQuery Mobile website, you can pick out the colors that you wanted. And although the UI looked the same for the most part, you could still get a little bit of customization. Around the same time as well, with the Apex 4.2 release, we really talked about something called responsive design. And this is when the web was first getting introduced to this concept of having one application or one website that would work across different devices. So what is responsive design? The idea was that you could have your website lay down a grid. And depending on the screen size, things would kind of collapse. And you'd use CSS3 media queries, which were new at the time, to build in support for these different devices. We also had universal, uh, sorry, we also had theme 25, which was the first somewhat responsive theme. And it really worked because of this feature called grid layout, right? So now you could declaratively lay out your uh, pages and your components using grids, and you could kind of override them a little bit, but this is the first time we introduced grid layout. So at the time, you may, uh, if you were using Apex at the time, you may have noticed that there was some transition to be done, right? Before, we were using tables for layout, which is a big no-no for web design, and now we were using grids. And if you fast forward a few more years, right, since the initial release of Apex 4.2 and jQuery Mobile being a part of the product, uh, things have changed quite drastically. If you just look at the size of our phones today, right, they're a lot larger. Uh, if you look at the signal quality, for example, this chart from OpenSignal, this shows you that the LTE speeds on average are faster than that of Wi-Fi. Right? So that means that more and more people are mobile now. More and more people are connected to the, to the internet using mobile devices. Um, this is in that same time, right? We had larger phones. So this is when the iPhone 6 first came out, the really, really large screen. Uh, we also introduced something called the universal theme, right? We, which had many, many different components. And one of my most favorite features is theme rollers. So now, without going to somebody else's website and picking some colors, downloading a file, putting that into your application, you could simply do all of this during runtime of your own application. So you could customize it, do all these things. It's all right there. So we have all these features. Let's look at what jQuery Mobile has been up to. Right? Because it's been a few years since they first came out. And it turns out that it hasn't really gone anywhere. If we look at the uh, Wikipedia page, it says the last stable release of jQuery Mobile was October 31st, 2014. That is eons ago in web technology. In fact, that's about four years and one day to this day today since that last release. That is incredibly long, especially for a technology. So it's a bit frightening that a library that hasn't been updated in so long, how can you still use that to be relevant in today's uh, modern web? With that being said, uh, in August 22nd, 2017, there was a posting that talked about an important change coming to Apex 5.2 at the time, but which is now 18. And the idea is that we are going to deprecate the jQuery mobile user interface. And if you have applications running jQuery mobile in Apex 5.1 or previous versions of Apex, then now is a good time to move forward to a universal theme or other equivalent. Now, why are we doing this? It's not just because it's outdated, but also because some of our core libraries no longer work together with jQuery mobile. So jQuery 3 and jQuery mobile don't, aren't really compatible. Um, there are also other reasons as well. However, this shouldn't mean that you should panic, right? If you have jQuery mobile applications running in Apex uh, you know, 18, they will work just fine. If you have applications running, if you have developed applications 
it'll be okay. You can still run these in 18.1 and 18.2. However, you should strongly consider moving on. And this is where we have this new chapter ahead of us. And with that story, I'd like to talk to you about what is new specifically in Universal Theme. And I'll focus on areas of mobile UI or building uh, you know, experiences for these mobile devices. So I'll go into five key areas here, and then I'll, build, uh, I'll do a demo where I kind of talk about each of these things to a small degree, uh, with the key demo being building a Twitter-like application. So first, let's talk about Font Apex. Now, Font Apex is the icon library that was designed in-house uh, in, in the Apex development team by our very talented designer, Bob Daly, on the team. And the idea was that we wanted to build an icon library that was more suitable for business applications that also matched the aesthetic of universal theme. So at the time, we were shipping font awesome 4.2 or 4.3, I believe. And we wanted these icons and font apex to be a seamless transition from font awesome, hence the same prefix for FA. Now, these font apex icons were designed at a 16 by 16 grid to be pixel perfect at that size. Uh, and they were designed to be line icons, meaning they're not really shaded. The, the shape of the icon kind of indicates what it is. In Apex 18.1, we introduced a new size of icons for font apex, the large size. So now, Font Apex is a family of icons, which includes both small and large icons. The large icons are designed at four times the canvas space, so at 32 pixels by 32, and they're also line icons. Now, the reason why we did this is because many applications, uh, you know, you might have components like cards or other areas or dashboards where you want to have a slightly larger icon. And when you're using this really small icon and blow that up, the larger it gets, the cruder the image gets, right? There's not a whole lot of detail there. So the idea was that we can bring you more detail with Font Apex inc by including this large set. Now, this is Font Apex 2. It still has 1,000 plus icons. There's 25 plus modifiers. And it's direction aware. Now, I'd like to stress this point for a few moments because this is just a sign of a very mature and uh, enterprise level framework. Many of our customers build applications in languages uh, across the world, right? They're very global applications. And if you are building an application which is in a right to left language, such as Arabic, Hebrew, Farsi, or Urdu, then you will, the entire UI has to shift, right? It's a right to left language. Meaning if you have a wizard, and you have a next button, next button pointing to the right side. And now you switch your language to Arabic and you've translated this language into Arabic, the entire UI changes and now it's pointing to the left. However, you chose the FA arrow right icon. So font apex is direction aware. Even though you chose the right icon, it will automatically flip over and point to the left when your language is a right to left language. Uh, we don't do this for up and down arrows. Uh, we do it for the side to side. Also, uh, Font Apex, again, is available in these small and large sizes. So again, more and more that uh, it's the case that Font Apex is becoming a family of different icons. We've also improved the experience for picking an icon in Page Designer. So previously, where you'd see a small list and a very small depiction of the icon. Now you see the larger one. And you can also change the size right here. So under style, you can select whether you want a small icon or a large icon. However, most times, this isn't even necessary. And depending on the component that you're using, if you're using something like cards or media list or other classic report templates, the large icons will be picked up automatically depending on the template options. So if you're using a cards template and you say, I want the cards to appear uh, using the featured style, which has a larger icon, it will automatically pick up the larger, more detailed font apex icons. The experience to pick a icon has also improved a little bit in the universal theme sample application. From here, you can kind of change the size, the modifiers, uh, here, I can pick an icon modifier, and you'll see that it immediately adds that directly to the icon. If I wanted to change it, 
I can pick another modifier, and I can also change the status color of that modifier. And when I'm done, I simply copy this line of code right here and put that into page, dis uh, into page designer. So if I wanted to have exactly this icon, I can just copy that. And if you want to use this icon anywhere else in any markup you want, you can also just copy this one string. Now, many people ask us, hey, can I use Font Apex on my other applications or other websites? Maybe they're not using Apex at all, or maybe it's for your marketing website, or maybe you want to print something out and put it on a billboard. Now, typically, I would say, yes, that I'm honored that you like this library so much. Please use it as much as you want, but I'm no lawyer. So we spoke to the legal team, and we spoke to uh, you know, how we can uh, make this font available to everyone for use for whatever purpose they want. And now I can proudly say, yes, you can. You can use this wherever you want because Font Apex is now open source. You can go to fontapex.com. It's in the Oracle organization uh, repository. And you can go and download it and use it wherever you want. And what this also means is that now we're able to push updates to Font Apex uh, far sooner than we would be able to otherwise. Um, you can use this for whatever purpose you like. In Apex itself, if we were to update Font Apex on GitHub, you can also download that new library, the new version of Font Apex, and put it into Apex 18.2 uh, and select Font Apex latest, and you'll be able to pick up the new icons there as well. So that's all about Font Apex. Uh, I'd like to focus next on touch support. Now, if you're building an application for these mobile devices, then touch input is uh, critical to the success of your application. In 18.1, we introduced dynamic actions for touch events. So you can tap on something, or you can press and hold, which means you know, tapping and holding. You can swipe, so simply swiping left or swiping right, uh, similar to what you would do in a carousel. And you can also pan, which is basically a press and then moving your uh, you know, touch pointer. And you can actually use these uh, fairly simply using dynamic actions uh, for doing some really interesting things. Uh, for example, if you have a number of success notifications or any kind of notifications, wouldn't it be nice if you can just simply swipe them away? Now you can. All you have to do is create a dynamic action which says, hey, on the swipe event, you can also set a direction, whether you want to swipe right or swipe left using the uh, JavaScript conditions. And you can set this up easily. So if you're using a tablet or, or a phone, or even if you're using a Windows laptop device, which many of which have touch screens, this could be hugely beneficial to your users. Let's talk a little bit about these mobile UI patterns. The idea is that if you want to build a compelling mobile experience, there are certain patterns which are unique to mobile devices, and we wanted to bring them into universal theme. So the first thing I want to talk to you about is navigation. Now, with universal theme, we already had two different types of navigation. You could have navigation, which was at the very top of your screen as a menu, so you can have any levels of navigation, and this is very common for fairly complex applications. Uh, and you could also have a navigation, which was a side tree navigation, right? So you'd have this navigation on this left side. You could collapse it and expand it. And it could also expand depending on how deep you want to go. But one thing that was missing is the ability to have navigation, which is really optimized for both different scenarios, right? Whether it's a large screen where you would have navigation on the top, but also on a very small screen where the navigation should really be at the very bottom. Now, I want to show you this uh, phone that I have here. And depending on how you use it, the typical holding position is something like this. And the closest buttons are going to be at the very bottom of your screen. That's where it's most easy to reach them. If you have a hamburger icon, which is at the very top left corner, it's really difficult to reach that. In fact, you'd have to either use two hands or hold your phone in a very awkward position to do it. So, if you look at many mobile applications today, what they do is they put the tab bar at the very bottom of the screen. So with Apex 18, this is now possible for your own Apex applications. So here's a, a small video that talks about, that's uh, you know, showing the navigation at the top. But when the screen is small, it's now at the very bottom. So again, 
This is just a movie trailers app we built, and I'll even demo this a little bit. But navigation to the top seems fairly normal for a desktop or a tablet device. But the moment the screen gets smaller and smaller, notice that now the navigation is at the very bottom. How do you do this? It's a simple uh, navigation change. You simply go into your UI attributes, you edit your user interface, and you set the navigation to be top navigation tabs. And there's even some options where you can define whether you want the uh, labels to appear, uh, how you want the, the tabs to appear for desktop devices versus mobile devices. And we'll get into that later in my demo. So next, I want to talk to you about uh, fixed headers. Now, before releasing Apex 18, we spoke to a number of our uh, key developers that were building uh, user experiences using the jQuery mobile UI. And we asked them, hey, what would you like to see in Universal Theme to make it easy for you to build these mobile experiences? And they said, well, a lot of mobile applications have a header position, which is fixed, meaning you can easily attach something to the header of the page, and it's always going to stay there. So these two, screen, these two screens right here, what's happening is as you scroll up the page, the blue logo area, which would have your application title, that will automatically go off screen and hide. But whatever is in your breadcrumb position, that will stick to the very top of your page. Now, you can put things such as you know, a page header. You can put an actions button. Many applications have a back button or an edit button. And you can easily put that. And now you're able to maximize your screen real estate. It simply sticks to the very top. You know, you're, long, you're no longer wasting uh, screen size, screen space on your logo. But if you notice, the moment you scroll up even a little bit, right, it will show up again. So let me go back one more time. So again, watch the video. As I scroll down, the fixed header sticks to the very top. The moment I scroll up even a tiny bit, the logo pops down in, uh, you know, in case you want to sign out or go to another location. We also asked developers, you know, what would you like to see? Uh, what other patterns you'd like to see? And they said, hey, in addition to these fixed headers, many mobile apps have a fixed footer near the very bottom of the screen. Now, this is probably common on virtually every mobile app that you see. In fact, if you open up your mail client on your mobile screen or Twitter or any application, you're going to see something at the very bottom, whether it's a back button, a menu button, maybe there's some uh, you know, footer information, maybe there's a button to compose an email. That's always going to be there, and it's omnipresent. It's always on the screen. So now you can also do that. If you use the button container template. There's a template option you can check that says stick to bottom on mobile, and that's all you have to do. So you can design a page. You can have your buttons container near the top for your desktop applications, your larger screen applications, and check that template option. And the moment the screen gets small, it will just be positioned at the very bottom. There's a whole lot more examples that I'll get into a little bit later. Uh, in the universal theme sample application. If there's one URL you need to know in this entire presentation, it's apex at oracle.com slash UT, which is really the de facto documentation for the universal theme. So that was the, uh, sorry, the mobile UI patterns. Let's talk a little bit about floating labels. Now, what are floating labels? It's really quite simple. It's a simple label template where if you focus on the field, the label will float above, allowing you to enter the value of that field. So here are two uh, you know, zoomed in versions of a uh, text field in a text area. And notice that at the moment I focus in, the, the label simply just floats up. Now, why would we want to do this? If you're using a mobile device, you may want to have a larger tap area, right? If you have a label and then a field directly below it, now you're, you have like, you know, you're, you're kind of using double the space for that small field where people really want to enter, right? So now you have a larger tap area, you can simply tap on it. The label itself is larger, so it's easier to see. But not only that, because the label and the value are immediately on top of each other, 
there's a lower cognitive load as you scan this page. So if you have labels side by side, you're doing that zigzag shift. You're going from the label to the item to the label to the item, right? And if you had labels above, as you can with the universal theme already, now you are scanning faster, but you're wasting quite a lot of screen real estate just with the label. Now you don't have to do any of that. Uh, one of the other benefits as well is that if you had a label above, now many people don't know this, but you can always click on the label or tap on the label to focus on the field. But because people are not aware of this, they will typically you know, use their mouse to select on the text field itself. Now the entire, uh, the entire field itself is clickable, it has label inside. Here's an example of a you know, fairly simple uh, form, but it has a few more options, right? So here's a task name, description. For the category and priority, I've just selected an icon, and notice the icon highlights as well. You can also do this with uh, you know, pretext and post text. Here's a date picker icon with the date picker lines up correctly. Everything still kind of works. And look at this exact layout. And if we were to change into page designer, here's how page designer shows the exact same form, right? It looks almost identical to what you see at runtime. That's the other big benefit of using floating labels. Because floating labels are designed to stretch, you know, to fit their containers, what you see in page designer is a lot closer to what you get when you run the application. So now you can configure your layout and the result should be a lot closer. Uh, finally, I kind of mentioned this a little bit, but they're mobile friendly. So here's two examples. Maybe the first one is a sign up form where you just have name, email, company, and the other one is a task form, it's somewhat a little bit more complicated, but it works really well on mobile because you have this larger tap area. You can tap on the large label, it'll automatically shrink. So I'd also like to talk about some key template options which are uh, new or improved in Apex 18. So first, with cards, there's two new styles of cards. Uh, this is the uh, block view. And if you notice, the icons will automatically size themselves to be a little bit uh, larger, right? They'll pick up the larger icons automatically. Uh, we've also cleaned up the basic and the compact view so the icon positions are a little bit more predictable. Um, let's look at the radio button item. So here's a standard radio button item in Universal Theme. And again, you can always click on the label to activate you know, this uh, item. However, many people uh, you know, often may not be aware of this. So what will happen is they'll use their mouse and they'll click exactly on this little circle. Now, if you have many items on your page, or if you have a large screen, or you know, whatever the case may be, you're, you're spending a lot more effort to move your mouse all the way and just clicking on that one item, right? Uh, Fitz Law tells us that the size of the control uh, is directly uh, proportional to the amount of time it takes to grab or to interact with that control, which means if you have a really big button, it's really easy for you to press it, versus if you have a really small control, it's, you have to really use like fine motor movements to really get to that control. Uh, they use this in cockpit design. Why shouldn't you use this when you're building your Apex application? So, if you toggle this option, which says display as pill button, the same exact control above, the radio buttons above, will now look like little buttons. And the benefit of this is now it's, you can click really anywhere, right? It's just a button, you click anywhere in the label right here and it'll activate. With Apex 18, the new feature here is that you can also do this with a multi-dimensional uh, you know, display of radios and uh, checkboxes as well. So here's how a radio button would look, and here's how a checkbox component would look, where you have a simple checkbox, but again, you can tap the entire area to activate it. Uh, another thing that I really like is these region icons, which you can now apply to your regions. So here's four regions, and it looks like, you know, these are just itching for an icon right here somewhere. And you can easily do that now. You can use your page center, you can set your region icon, you pick whatever you like, and it'll show up uh, you know, uh, directly before the title. You can also customize them using the universal theme colors, uh, or you can even use the larger ones. It should all just work. 
Uh, here's another uh, template option, which uh, is one of my favorites. Let's say you have a classic report, and you're showing all the possible records there are. So in this case, I'm showing a cards uh, list for some projects, and there's something wrong here. And I've asked this a few times. People always say, you know, hey, the icons are wrong, or you know, the colors don't look so good. So you, you can pick other colors. You can pick other icons. But what's really kind of sticking out to me here is this pagination. If I'm seeing all four items of my cards and I can't paginate next, next, then this piece of information really serves no value. So now there's a template option which you can just hide this. For all classic report templates, there's a template option called pagination display. And you simply check the hide when all rows displayed box. And then that's it. They will no longer show up unless there is pagination. So if you have, if you're showing maybe 10 and you have 15 records and you have a next button, it's all fine. So that's some template options. I'd like to get into the demo. And the way I'm going to start is I want to show you some applications that are using universal theme just to show you what you can do, you know, with just a little bit of customization. Uh, and then I'd like to go into my, uh, you know, key demo, which is to build a Twitter-like application using Apex. Now, for that, what I'm going to do is I, I, look at, I looked at screenshots from the Twitter app on my iPhone. And I wanted to build something close to this type of UI. Now, we're not going to get to all the screens. But the idea is, can we get to this first screen and build something fairly compelling? So with that being said, I'd like to get into my demo now. And we have about 30 minutes left, so I think it's a good amount of time. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is the Oracle internal employee directory application. And just to show you that, you know, hey, this is a universal theme application. This is about 90% universal theme with some customizations added. Now, we can do these customizations because this is a you know, fairly popular application and it deserves to have some custom design to really optimize its user experience. Most of your applications may not require this level of customization. So the first thing I want to show you is just like this provide feedback button right here. And right here, we have the count of how many feedbacks we have. We have about 3,115 feedback to, to date. And this control right here is exactly the same control you would get in your own applications if you check that feedback uh, application feature. Right? It's exactly the same thing. Uh, however, there's one thing in here that I really like, which is not part of universal theme. And that's this little plane right here. So if you hover on this plane, it starts to shake. And you know, we at Oracle seem to really like this plane. So on Aria, a page that every employee visits, we thought it'd be kind of cool if the plane did something if you hovered over it. And we thought, well, wouldn't it be even nicer if the plane did something even cooler if you clicked on it? So if I click on this plane, it starts to fly. And this is 0% universal theme. But it goes to show you that you know, with a little bit of CSS, a little bit of HTML, and a little bit of JavaScript, you can really go a long way. Apex is nothing but a thin veneer on your database. right? It's just spitting out HTML. So if you understand the underlying technology behind it, you can do things like this fairly easily for your own applications. Now, the next application I want to show you is the universal theme, sorry, the uh, movies application that we built. So here's an application, and I'll sign in right now. And in fact, I'm going to open this also in a new browser just to show you how the mobile experience is like. And the idea here is that I wanted to build something that looks like any other application on the App Store, right? It doesn't have to be a data-centric application. You know, that's not the only thing you can build using Apex, right? You can build a fairly, you can build some fun applications as well. So here's an application showing off all the movies, and you can watch movie trailers. So I want to show you the desktop experience and the mobile experience. So let's go into a movie. So for example, uh, Halloween. I can click on the movie, and I'll click on it here as well. And just to show you the experience uh, that you get, right? So here's the Halloween movie. You get the poster image. You can scroll down. You can see some details. On the mobile experience, what you have is you know, fairly identical 
except the navigation is at the very bottom. And you see the same you know, information here. If I can click on cast, I see cards, same universal theme cards template, which shows me the cast. I can click on reviews. I see the comments uh, you know, template here. I can even click on trailers and watch some trailers. Now, the mobile experience is almost identical, right? Here's the same universal theme cards. Uh, if I click on reviews, again, the same universal theme uh, component, but now it works really well for mobile. Uh, one other thing that I like is, let's say if I wanted to favorite this movie, I can click on this little heart icon right here. And what that will do is it'll trigger a, you know, a PLSQL process, it'll add it to my uh, you know, favorites table, uh, and then it'll add, it'll change the icon to be a colored heart icon. And also at the very bottom of my screen where I show my favorites, it'll add a badge, which is I have one favorite. This is really easy to do. This is just a little bit of dynamic actions with a little bit of JavaScript. But the experience that you get is far, uh, you know, it's far improved, right? You're no longer reloading the entire page. You're just clicking on something and it just simply shows up. The trailers as well. If I wanted to play this trailer, what would happen is on your phone, typically it will take over your entire screen and it'll just play immediately. So that's just an example of the Movie Trailers app and I'll uh, you know, provide the download for this as well so you can download it and see how it's done. All of the data in this application is all coming from an external API. It's called the Movie Database, the moviedb.org. And the only table I have is just the favorites table where I check all of my favorites. So that's the only piece of data that we're storing in Apex here. All right, so now I'd like to get into building this Twitter application. And we have about 25 minutes, so I think that's more than enough time to get into it. Uh, here, I'm just, I have my workspace on apexoracle.com. And just to show you that I'm not really cheating, it's a brand new workspace, no applications, no nothing. And I'm gonna even start by building a very simple data model. So I'll go into quick SQL right here. Uh, or actually, I can just use my uh, shortcuts here so I can type in quick SQL. And just a sec, let me just get my notes over here. Okay, so what I wanna do is build a very simple Twitter app and the two tables I'll probably need is just going to be a users table and a tweets table, just to keep it super simple. So I have my users and I have first name, last name, email, and then I have my tweets table, which has a user ID, it has a tweet, which is gonna be... Shakib, can I just ask you make your browser bigger and potentially make your font a bit bigger? It's, it's very small. Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Thank you. That's much better. How's this? Okay. And I'm not gonna bore you guys with the details. I'm just gonna copy in my data model that are, but it's super simple. All I'm saying is users table, first name, last name, email, which is not null, tweets, tweet, a user ID and tweet of our card 280 characters. And I'm creating a view as well on the same uh, tweet data just to have a simpler table. So I can generate this. Uh, you know, here I have my data and I wanna do one more thing. Let's just give it some audit columns and app prefix. I'll give it uh, app underscore and let's create the audit columns as well. That's it. So now I have my data model. Let's go and save this. And run this script. So here's my data model. I think it looks pretty good. Let's go run it. Okay. All right, everything went well. 68 statements, zero errors. Now I can click on this create app from script button and I'll go straight into the create app wizard. Uh, and from here, what I wanna do is, in fact, let me pull up the screenshot of the uh, other screen right here. Let's see if I can blow this up a little bit more. In fact, let me do this. Right, that way we know what we're building. So we'll have this on the left side, uh, on the right side. So what I wanna do is I wanna build an application which has you know, four key areas, home, search, notifications, and messages. We'll just use users for that. First, I'll give it an app name. We'll call it Apex Twitter. Maybe I'll pick a 
icon that looks a little bit closer to Twitter. So how about messages? Let me pick a nice blue. OK. That looks good. Uh, here I have a home page that's blank, and I have the users and the tweets. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this the home page. Just because I already, I already have that report, let's just put it at the very top. So I can do this by going into advanced, checking this as the home page. I'll call it a home, and I can pick an icon. And this, instead of this being that, uh, the home page before, I'll call it search. Okay, and I have a users table. Let's update the icon for this as well. And let's add one more page for notifications here. And for right now, I'm just going to show you um, a blank page. Okay, let's move this up. OK, so we have the home, search, notifications, and users pages. Now, I'm not going to add any of the features. I just want to build a very simple application. So I think everything here looks pretty good. Let's go and create that app. Now, as it's creating, what we want to do is try to mi mirror the right side image as much as we can, right? So we have this you know, header section here. We have the you know, body of the page, which has the tweets. And then we have this navigation. So let's go and run this application that we just built. And I'm going to open this up in Safari as well so you can see how it looks like you know, for a small screen. All right, so here's how the experience looks like on a very small screen. And here's the experience on the left side on a desktop screen. So the first thing I don't like is I don't want to use this navigation pattern. right? I want the navigation to be at the very bottom. I don't want to use this hamburger menu. So to change that, I can go into Shared Components. Then I go into User Interface Attributes, which is right in the middle of the page. Now let's go edit this UI. If I go down to Navigation, I can set the positions. I want this to be top. And right here, let's set this to Top Navigation Tabs. For Desktop, I want the labels to be in line. And for Mobile, because the Twitter app doesn't really show labels here, I'm not going to show the labels. I'm going to you know, hide the labels here. So let's go and apply those changes. All right. And if I run the application again, and if I run it on the mobile app, on the uh, Safari to the right, notice that automatically my navigation is at the very bottom. And for desktop, it still looks fairly appropriate. Okay. Uh, one thing that I don't like now is we have this interactive report, and it's not really the ideal display for a mobile device. So let's see if we have something in Universal Theme that we could use to make this look closer to the actual Twitter application. So this is where the one URL you need to know is apex.org.com slash ut. If I go in here, I can go to Components. And you can look through all of these, but actually, I think I want something that looks like comments. And this looks a lot closer to what a Twitter app would have. And it's a classic report template. I can even scroll down. I can find sample query. And I can just kind of use this sample query if I wanted. So let's go and use this and go back to our applications. I'm going to click on this Edit Page button. A little bit, okay. So, and I'll, in fact, I'll even reset my uh, UI here. Okay. So here I have my tweets classic report. Let's quickly add a region, and we'll call this tweets list. This is going to be a classic report template, and I'm going to use my uh, view that I've, I've used, I've created, and I'm going to paste in that sample code from earlier, OK? Now, this is all going to come from app, tweets, view. And for the user icon, it gives me a hint. I can use the initials API, so I'll do that. And this is going to be the uh, user. Uh, I guess I can just use email, user email, or maybe just email. Let's go. In fact, let me go find this out. That's OK. I just want to make sure I have all the right columns. Let's 
sec. Okay, so here's all the columns I have in my view. Let's use the email for the initials. Okay, I have that. Comment date, that is going to be the, uh, let's see, tweet created date, because I want that based on when the tweet was created. Okay. Username, I can again do you know first name, last name. I think that's a little bit friendlier, so I'll do first name, concatenate with last name. Comment text. Now, this is the actual tweet itself, right? So that will just be tweet. Uh, everything else can kind of stay as is. I'm going to add some uh, empty attributes here. Uh, I don't need any comment modifiers. The, now, this is interesting. What this is doing is it's giving me a color from 0 to 45. And it will color in using the universal theme color palette. So instead of this using the username, I'm going to use the email. I think everything else looks pretty good. What's going on? Uh, oops, last one. And also, I want to order by created tweet, created, right? Am I missing something here? Did I get them? OK. Very good. So now we have a classic report. Uh, however, let's go change the template, right? It's not going to use this. It's going to use the comments template. And I think sp speech bubbles look fine. Let's go and save this report and run our application. So all right, it's looking a little bit better now. We have a list of all the users. We have the tweets. Uh, let's clean up a few more things. I don't like the fact that this is in a region header here. So if I reload this page, you'll see. I don't want this here, and I want to create tweet button here, right? Similar to what Twitter application does. So, so let's go back to Page Designer, and I already have this create button. I'm just going to move this into the next position of the breadcrumb region, and in fact, I'll even change it to just being an icon. So I'll pick an icon here. Let's pick um, maybe like a, a nice pencil. So how about this? And I don't want it to look like a box. I just want it to look blue, similar to what they did here. So this is going to be you know, just a simple type of link button. All right. So here's a UI on mobile, and here's a UI on desktop. Right? Let's go get rid of that region template really quickly. So right here, I can go down and remove this. Don't really need to have that outside border. All right. Already, it's looking a whole lot better, right? If I reload the page, I get something that looks a little bit closer to this tweet's application. Now, what else? We, what else? Well, you know, what else can we do? Uh, first thing I don't like, I don't like this date. I want that to be a since from MatMask. They kind of have like you know one day, forty-eight minutes. We can do something just like that. Um, look at the notifications. They kind of show you how many notifications you have. Why don't we add a badge over here? Uh, and also, as you scroll down. I want that tweet button to always be visible, right? I want this to always be on screen. So let's start with that first, and then we'll go and edit the other things. To do that, here's my breadcrumb region, and here's my page. If I click on the page, template options, there's a template option that says sticky header on mobile. If I just check that option, and I save the page, and I reload now, this header will always be at the very top of the screen. So I can, people can always go and tweet something. So that was fairly simple. I'm just going to go edit this format mask. So again, I go into columns. I go into the comment date. And here, I can just type in since. And that will give me the nice you know, format mask. But I believe there's also a since short. I got to see if this is the right one. And now we have the shorter version of this, which is even better for mobile devices. OK, so we got this. Let's do a few more things. Let's go add that notifications badge. So how do we do that? Well, the, na the navigation list that we created, the navigation menu, is just a list component in Apex. So I'm going to navigate to my lists page. And I'll even show off how to use Spotlight as I do this. So you can activate Spotlight using the Control Quote button on the English keyboard, on the US keyboard, or just clicking on this button. And I'll type in Lists. If I hit Enter, it'll take me straight into my Lists and Shared Components. So here's Desktop Navigation, and here's my Notifications. 
And what I want to do here is I want to add a badge. Now, we have all these user-defined attributes, but how do you know which is which? I can click on this button to show me all the attributes. And if I just pick the template that I'm using, which is top navigation tabs, it'll tell me what each of those attributes mean. So attribute two is the badge value. And just for fun, I'm going to use the uh, badge class as well to really highlight that in the red color. So attributes two and five. And for attributes two, typically what I would do is I would create an application item called like notification count. And I would compute that. But for right now, I'm just going to do eight. And then for this, this is the badge class. Now, where can I get a nice color for, for the badge class? If I go back to my universal theme sample application, and I go into this reference section, there's an entire wealth of knowledge here. If I go into color and status modifiers, I can use all of these colors really wherever I want in my application. So I'm going to copy this, which is the red color, U color 9. And if I put this back right there, and apply my changes. Let's go and run my application on both desktop and mobile. And it's starting to look a whole lot better, right? I got my notifications. I have my list right here. And if I scroll up, you know, looks fairly compelling. In fact, within, I don't know, 10 minutes from basically nothing to, you know, a Twitter-like application. Now, there's a few more things I want to do. Uh, the first thing is, at the very bottom of the page, I still have my interactive report region. And that's not really appropriate for a mobile device. So it would be nice if I could hide something for mobile and show it on desktop or show it on a larger screen. So how do we do that? Going back to the universal theme sample application, there's this new section, especially in 18.2, for responsive classes. And this shows me all the modifier classes that I have to hide and show things depending on the screen size that I'm using. So what I want to do here is if I look at you know, these classes, hidden, extra small, up, this means that, hey, if it's an extra small screen, it will show. Everything else, it'll be hidden for. So let's go and use those exact things. So what I want to do is I want the comments to show up when it's a small screen uh, and below. And I want the report to show up if it's a small screen and above. So let's go back to my edit page. And here's my classic report. If I go type in uh, CSS, I can kind of bookmark this. Under appearance, what I want to type in is I want to, again, I want to hide this for small screens and up. So I'll use my hidden SM up class, which is right here. So show this for the really small screens, hide it everywhere else. And I want the reverse of this for the interactive report, where I want to hide it for these two and show it for the larger screen. So I just want to use hidden XS down. OK, so now if I run the same application on both screens, it looks a whole lot different, right? You have your Twitter application on the left, which is showing you an interactive report where people can do filters and aggregations and all sorts of things. And on my mobile app, I see the Twitter app that I would expect on a mobile app, right? Something very simple and streamlined. So we have this so far. Now we can go into really any direction from here. Um, I just have a few minutes, so I'm not going to get into this. But what you could do is you could add some touch events here and really kind of maybe even show an action sheet or something. Uh, but for the time limits, I'm not going to show it. But I do have an application that I built uh, earlier, which I will share. I'm going to run this on both screens as well. So again, very similar user, uh, user interfaces. The only thing I've done here is I've kind of customized the color a little bit using the Twitter color. But here's my application. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to use a touch event. So if I press and hold on one of these tweets, I get a nice little share sheet that shows me what actions I can perform. So for example, if I press and hold on this, I get this little action sheet that lets me like, retweet, or view user profile. Now, this is really cool and really easy to hook up. Uh, I'll show you how it was hooked up here. So in my application, again, it's the exact same thing, classic report, 
I have my interactive report, and I have this actions sheet uh, region, which is an inline dialog, and I have I give it I give it an ID actions sheet. Okay, and this is just a list which has the three items: like, retweet, and view user profile. If I look at my dynamic actions, I have this uh, on press event, show the action sheet. And this is the only little, a little bit of custom kind of thing I had to do was I had to find a selector which I could press and hold. And I didn't want it to be just on the region or just on a specific button. I found this T comments item selector which kind of combined the entire comment. And simply when you press on that using this press events, it's just going to show this dialog open. I believe in a future version of Apex, future release, it might even be easier to do this. You might not even have to write this JavaScript code. And really, that is all that is happening here. I want to uh, go back to the Universal Theme Sample app to show you a little bit more of what you can do with uh, mobile design patterns. And then I'll kind of wind up my presentation. I'll, I will go into Q&A, although I know we're running out of time. So again, in the Universal Theme Sample application, you'll find examples of all of this stuff and how to do it. So again, here's the header examples. You can see it all right here. Uh, I, you can go into touch gestures. You can see all the notable event tap data as well. So you can tap on things, uh, the swipes. You can use offset direction to kind of set something up. Uh, I want to briefly mention these jQuery mobile components. Now, if you're migrating from a jQuery mobile app to Universal Theme, which I strongly recommend you do if you are, uh, if you have such an application, is we've even ported over some of the components from jQuery Mobile. So things like the list view, column toggle, and reflow report allow you to have an easier migration path into Universal Theme. So for example, here is a list view, which you had in your Universal, uh, your jQuery Mobile apps, but now it's available in uh, for all applications, really. Uh, you know, here's a slightly updated version of that. So the same is true for a column toggle report. If you want a simple uh, report where you can kind of show and hide more columns, you can do that. And the same for a reflow report, which will reflow all the columns, uh, all the column headers, so it's easier to consume. So that was my demo that, you know, we've kind of built this application. I'll share all the export files. I have a few questions that I wanted to entertain. Uh, first, should I migrate from jQuery mobile apps to you know, Universal Theme? And the question, is, the answer is yes. You absolutely should. Uh, we believe that Universal Theme uh, you know, is an excellent uh, you know, approach to building these mobile user interfaces. And with all the new features and functionality in Apex 18, it makes it even easier to do that. Um, can I build a compelling mobile, ex mobile experience using Universal Theme? Now, what you've seen me do, I've kind of run through it a little bit fast, but within maybe 10 minutes, with zero custom, co custom coding, we were able to build an app that looks kind of like Twitter. So I think the answer to this is yes, you can build a fairly compelling you know, mobile experience using Universal Theme. With all that said, I think there's a really bright future ahead of us. If you're building a mobile experience using Apex, now is really the best time. And you can even take this one step further by you know, turning your app into a progressive web app. So uh, Vince from Instant has an amazing uh, you know, tutorial. I believe there's even a webinar coming up on this that talks you through how to really take your app to the next level and even make it more optimized for mobile. Uh, with that being said, that was all about Universal Theme. Thank you so much for attending this Office Hour session. And we have just a few moments so I'd love to take uh, whatever questions you have. Uh, David, do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do, Shakib. So the first question comes from Kevin. Um, and it was about when will Apex supply SVG font? Um, the font's in SVG. So great opportunity for you to uh, quickly link to GitHub and show them the stuff on GitHub, if you could, please. Yeah, so I think the answer, so uh, first thing you can do, you can go to fontapex.com, you can download the open source uh, you know, version of Font Apex, you can get all of the SVGs there. I think the question is really towards, you know, uh, right now we're using classes and we're using a font file to reference these icons. Uh, I think the question is when are we going to go to SVGs, so embedding the actual SVGs as icons, and, and that's something that we're looking at and we'd like to do for a future release of Apex. It's a little bit more complicated than uh, you'd think just because right now we're going from just a simple class, and what would happen is you'd actually embed the SVG where that class 
would go. So uh, you might see some of that uh, a little bit in, in a future uh, release, uh, Safe Harbor. Uh, however, going forward, I, I think uh, that would be ideal. Okay. And my next question is from Hyphy and asking about being able to stack different icons on top of each other like you can do for Font Awesome. Um, and it'd be nice to have that rather than just modifiers. Yes, that's a great question. And there's a really good reason why we didn't do that yet. Uh, we just weren't happy with the result. Uh, we're, we're super like uh, picky when it comes to making sure the icons look correct for a different screen size and they're like, you know, pixel perfect. They're, they're pure sharp at all resolutions. So we haven't yet figured out the magic combination of, you know, putting maybe a larger icon in the back and having enough space where you can comfortably put another icon in front of it. Uh, however, it is something that we are exploring and, you know, I, I, I wish that that's something that we can do sometime soon, but maybe in a future release you might, you know, see really stacked icons where you can put an icon on top of another icon. Okay. Um, so the next one is um, from Charles. And uh, is there a way to shrink the floating label fields? Um, basically, he was asking for a small option as opposed to the large and extra large options. Um, and, you know, can you stack the items better? So uh, another so way, sorry, yeah. just another way that he was talking about is on desktops having non-floating labels and on mobile having floating labels, that sort of thing. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question. Unfortunately, right now, that's not possible. The template itself is quite different for floating labels. Uh, however, I think that's a great idea. It would be, be nice to have even, you know, these distinct experiences for large screens versus small screens. So that's something that we could, you know, investigate. Uh, however, for a smaller size for floating labels, um, again, that's something that we can investigate. You can try to tweak some things here and there with padding to see if it'll work, but uh, it's really difficult to make a floating label smaller than what we have. You, you can try maybe trim a few pixels off here and there, but uh, it gets quite difficult. So I understand your question. I hear you. Uh, unfortunately, right now, uh, unless you try to customize it yourself, uh, you know, there's no out-of-the-box option for that. Thank you. And my last question I've got is from, um, oh, you're saying that, the label is small, but the space is big. So uh, my last question from Vito is, is there a way to show a hamburger menu for an extra small screen um, for top menus and then um, show the whole menu when, when it's a larger screen? So rather than the vertical menus, when it's a horizontal menu. So there is a way to do that. Um, it's not uh, out of the box. So again, uh, you know, Everything in Apex is just an Apex component. So the navigation menu that you're using, it's really just a list which happens to be in a somewhat special position on your application. So if you wanted to have the top menu, let's say you wanted to use a menu, the, the top menu navigation for desktops and for mobile screens, you wanted to have the left side hamburger, uh, what you could do is you could create maybe a page zero region, which is the left side navigation template, or maybe even the top, probably the top one uh, in the page header position, I believe it's, or page navigation position, and only show that for large screens, and then hide the tree navigation or the left side navigation for uh, these large screens as well, right? So you can kind of make it work, although it's not gonna be out of the box. I think there are some ways you can do it. The key being that these are just list templates. These are just regions. So you can really just put them on the page and kind of hide them depending on certain viewports. Okay. So thank you very much. Uh, there are a couple of questions coming in about support. We always support the latest browser version minus one. Um, so while Edge is the latest browser, we are supporting IE 11. Um, in the future, if Microsoft comes out with uh, later browsers, then we will support Edge in the latest browser. As far as 11G goes, that's the latest version of the database we currently support. Uh, when we come out with each release, we put in our uh, installation guide what versions of the database are supported. So again, with Safe Harbor, we can't go into that detail at this point. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for your time today. I know we ran over by a few minutes. Thank you very much, Shakib. And we will have another office hours in two weeks. I haven't actually put the details up yet, but I will be putting that up today. 
Again, the recording should be available in approximately a day or so, if not, it's sooner. And uh, we welcome to talking to you again in two weeks' time. So thank you very Thanks, much. Everybody. Thanks for coming. Bye. Thanks, Keith. Bye.